Hi, my name is Sarah McLean. It's good to meditate with you today. I love meditation because of its many benefits. Its benefits for your physical health, lower blood pressure, better immunity, uh, more balanced blood sugar, and I love it for our mental health and well-being in terms of being able to focus on one thing at a time, being clear about the choices we make, having a better memory, and even increasing the IQ. And I love it for the emotional fluency it creates. Because of our meditation practice, we can begin to be more aware of how we actually are feeling in response to a situation. And because we become aware of that, we no longer repress it, and we're in real time with our feelings. It's a much more healthy way to uh, relate to others and to ourselves. But I also love and probably maintain my practice because of the spiritual benefits. You know, meditation really helps to uncover the truth of who we are, the truth of who you are. You know, we think that um, we are these roles that we play, whether you're a sister or brother or mother or father, whether you're the CEO or um, a minimum wage worker, you know, we often identify ourselves by the roles we play. And many of us identify ourselves by the responsibilities we have, a caregiver and really a decision maker at work or the chauffeur for the family and the kids' soccer games. You know, we, we define ourselves by our roles and our responsibilities and our relationships to, to life in general. But who you are and who I am is so much more than that. And as the meditation practice connects us or yokes us to who we really are throughout, throughout our 40 days here or throughout our lives, meditation helps us to open our eyes and our awareness to the goodness of who we are outside of our doubts and our fears, outside of our ego outside of our shame, outside of our anger, outside of our anxiety and our depression, there is this essential goodness, our essential self, that is the same as you and the person at work, the person that you love the most, and the person that rocks your world the most. You are essentially love. You are essentially awareness. And you are essentially a deep, listener, and you're here, not only for yourself, but for everyone. You love not only yourself, but everyone. Underneath it all, you are good. Not in the sense of being righteousness, or righteous, but or being superior, or better than, but truly, heartfully good. Who you are is immeasurable. Who you are is pure awareness and has been with you since you were born. This beauty, this awakened one. And though we play these roles in our lives, who you are is this perfect, balanced, good, equal, powerful, loving presence. So meditation is the journey that unlocks the, the awareness of this. You become aware of this awareness. Your mind and your heart become one. You uncover the layers of your beliefs and your limitations and your doubts to reveal who you really are. Meditation comes from the yoga tradition. Yoga comes from the root word yug, which means to yoke. Imagine that you're yoking your awareness with everything else in your life. You're yoking your goodness with everything in your life. Along the way, in traditional spiritual monastic meditation settings, whether it's the Christian tradition or, or the Kabbalist tradition or the Sufi tradition or the yoga tradition, there are guidelines. I'm just going to use, for example, uh, the precepts from the Buddhist tradition. Quite often they ask you to take points, whether it's the Ten Commandments or the Four Agreements but in, in that case, uh, Don Miguel's, you take these ideas, these vows, and you measure your life using these ideas. For instance, um, the, in Thich Nhat Hanh's tradition, he's a Zen Buddhist monk 
who's still alive today, he talks about the first precept, which is to have reverence for life. And it's really about maintaining a commitment to cultivating this awareness of how your life is connected to all other lives, this insight of interbeing, which awakens the compassion inside all of us. When, when one is committed to reverence for life, one is committed to protecting the lives of people and living beings that are still, who, that are wanting to be how you are, that are wanting to live a life of safety and freedom and happiness and fulfillment. So when we have these vows or these precepts or these commandments or these um, these trainings, we can measure our lives around them. So let's talk about what your vow is, what your secret vow is. How do you measure your life? Is it all about mindfulness? Is it all about nonviolence? Is it about speaking your truth or always doing your best? Is it about keeping God first or is it about not making assumptions? What do you what do you vow? How do you vow to live in your life? We're human. We make mistakes, especially when we're under stress. Meditation helps us to remember what our secret vows are. Meditation helps us to reflect on how we're living our lives. In the yoga tradition, they talk about yamas, the laws of life, which can include nonviolence, truthfulness, integrity, chastity, and non-attachment. So consider what you're committed to. What are your secret vows? Everyone is born of this beautiful, pure awareness, and our operating system really consists of these commitments that we make. So let's close our eyes and begin a meditation. Begin to give yourself some slow, long, deep breaths, ideally through your nose. your breath return to its natural rhythm and depth. Softly and gently close your eyes Settle into this space right here, right now. Relax your whole body. Notice the sounds that meet your ears. Notice the sensations that meet your skin. With your eyes closed, notice how you meet everything with your awareness. Relax your whole body. Your body is right here. Allow your attention to be captivated by the movements of the body and the stillness of the body.
let your breath charm you as it is too here. The mind might travel, and that's perfectly fine, but bring it right back here as we'll take this opportunity to examine our lives, examine our ideas, our vows, our commitments, our intentions. I'm going to share with you some vows from various traditions, some guidelines that I ask you to reflect on and see if they resonate with you. In the 13th century, there was a Zen master, Dogen, and he said that the path to freedom and happiness is through coming to study yourselves completely. To study the self is to forget the self. And to forget the self is to become one with all beings. We'll take this opportunity to study the self. What is this self? The self has something to do with the awareness of the one who's listening to me now. The one who's aware of the sounds in the room. The one who's aware of the movement in the body. The one who's aware of what's around them when they look closely. The true self is that presence, that goodness we talked of earlier. And let's reflect now on these precepts. The first one we can look at is being honest, speaking our truth. Reflect on speaking honestly. What is it that prevents you from engaging honestly? Consider carefully the nature of deception. How do we delude ourselves? How do we betray ourselves by not speaking what we truly know to be true? Open your ears to what is happening around you right now. Listen to what's in your own body right now. Simply say aloud, if you like, what you hear. This is a practice of speaking the truth in real time. Heartbeat, clock ticking. computer worrying. What do you hear? Speak it aloud. Now notice what you feel, the sensations in your body or around you, heat or coolness or the air meeting your skin, and speak that aloud in real time. It's simple, not always easy. What is truth? 
How do you speak your truth? How do you listen to yourself as you speak? How do you listen to yourself as you think? How do you greet others in your day? What is truthful for you? When do you speak the truth? Speaking the truth and deep listening are interconnected. Whether you're deep listening to yourself or someone else, both have this ingredient of pure awareness of the true self Thich Nhat Hanh calls it loving speech and deep listening. And he suggests this vow. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful speech and the inability to listen to others, I am committed to cultivating loving speech and compassionate listening in order to relieve suffering and to re promote reconciliation and peace in myself and among others, ethnic and religious groups, and other nations. Refraining from incorrect speech, without deception, practicing truthfulness, and practicing deep listening to yourself and others putting aside your future and your past and being completely present. Being truthful and listening deeply causes the barriers between you and everything else to melt away. Reflecting on that. Bring your attention now back to your breath. And let's reflect on another vow, commitment, or precept. It has many, many different ways of stating it, whether it's thou shall not kill or refraining from taking that which is not given or not stealing, or practicing generosity. But giving and receiving are two sides of the same coin. And Henry Miller, the playwright, once wrote, giving and receiving are at bottom one thing dependent upon whether one lives opened or closed. Living openly, one becomes a medium, a transmitter. Living thus as a river, one experiences life to the full, flows along with the current of life, and dies in order to live again as the ocean. 
This is the metaphor for this awareness that underlies all thought. This true self of yours. How do you freely give and freely receive? This vow is to refrain from not taking that which is not given freely. It calls on us to realize that our clinging and our grasping and our hoarding and our greed and our stealing and our stinginess comes from ignorance of the abundance of life, ignorance of our true nature which is beyond ownership of any one thing. Reflect on ownership now. What do you own, really, as you sit here with your eyes closed? Thich Nhat Hanh asks people to take this vow, the vow of true happiness, aware of the suffering caused by exploitation, social injustice, stealing, and oppression. I am committed to practicing generosity in my thinking, speaking, and acting. I am determined not to steal and not to possess anything that should belong to others. And I will share my time, energy, and material resources with those who are in need. How does that feel? What does it feel like when you reflect on that? Do you give freely of all that you can, whether it's your attention, material goods, your energy, your talents? Explore your belief on what you think you don't have. Notice where you take a little more than you need because of this belief that you don't have enough. Notice the obvious and subtle ways in which you take what is not yours or take in ways in which you hold back from giving freely. Not just your material items, but time, attention, energy. I believe your attention is love. How do you hold that back? Notice the little ways that you might not be generous. Or that you might think you don't have enough or you're not receiving what others are offering you.
What do you feel like you're lacking? Is there a poverty? Is there greed? Is there envy? Sometimes we're greedy for other people's attention or opinions. Reflect without judging yourself. Reflect on your generosity, where you do give, where you do give openly, performing acts of kindness without anyone knowing. What does it take to be truly open, generous, receiving? Could it take courage? Could it take faith? Now bring your attention back to your breath. We've looked at vows of deep listening and speaking the truth. We've looked at receiving and giving. And now we'll explore how to support life. Taking up the way of supporting life or having reverence for life. Notice the ways in which you revere your own life. You love your own life. And maybe you've never even thought about it. with its roots in the thou shall not kill commandment. The idea of not taking life at all, but to face squarely how we interact with our life, with the life of all, all that is vibrating with this livingness around us. This may be difficult if you're ambivalent about the value of all life. And this isn't meant to be judgmental. It's meant to have you squarely look at the livingness around you and your relationship to this. The former president of the Czech Republic, Vaclav Havel said in his book, The Art of the Impossible, our life on this earth is not just a random event among billions of other random cosmic events that will pass away without a trace. It is an integral component or link, however minuscule, in the great and mysterious order of being, an order in which everything has a place of its own, in which nothing that has been once done can be undone. Every life is an integral component or link in the great and mysterious order of being. That awareness that you're listening to me with is simply a wave in that giant ocean and order of being.
How do you support life, your life, another being's life? How do you kill? How do you have less reverence for life? Thich Nhat Hanh writes, Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I am committed to cultivating the insight of interbeing and compassion and learning ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I am determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to support any act of killing in the world in my thinking, or in my way of life. So to be com committed to not killing doesn't mean you have to become a crusader or make everyone vegetarian or vegan. But look even deeper and understand where the urge to end life comes from. I mean, it's part of our culture to go to war. It's been around for thousands of years. And often it's a war over ideas, a war over differences. Where do you Righteously go to war. Perhaps you go to war in your mind over someone who insults you. Or maybe you compete and kill another person's opportunity. Simply look. This isn't about hurting yourself in the process. This is about becoming aware and awakened to who you really are. And where this awareness shines its light, you can make changes if you care to. Breathe in the presence of your life. Breathe in your humanness and treat yourself with compassion. I know that you aspire to live life and take action with an open heart. And there's really no manual that spells out right or wrong action for every situation that you face today. We often are looking for very clear guidelines that we don't have. But when you reflect on your life and reflect on how you operate, Maybe you find you really do want to aspire to deeper listening or truthful speech or being more generous and receptive or being more supportive of your life and of other people's lives. These are just three vows you can take, places you can look and reflect on It's just a simple exploration and investigation. But taking a look even at the most challenging areas of life can open the door to finding wholeness in your own, in your own journey.
simply a training, as all meditation is. Bring your attention back to your breath and relax your whole body. I want to share with you something the Dalai Lama said to a group of teachers. There is only one important point you must keep in your mind and let it be your guide. No matter what people call you, you are just who you are. Keep to this truth. You must ask yourself how it is you want to live your life. We live and we die. This is the truth that we can only face alone. No one else can help us with this, not even the Buddha. So consider carefully what prevents you from living the way you want to live in your life? How do you choose to live your life with the freedom that you fundamentally have? What motivates you to live your life in the way you choose to? This deep questioning, this deep exploration may be brought out into your day, into this week, into this 40-day practice period. And with any inquiry such as this, it may take some time before you Really stop and see clearly your actions. But be patient. Be honest. And be sweet to yourself. Because out of the chaos of this unrevealed way we operate, there can be freedom. There can be clarity and there can be a renewed relationship to your own vows, to your own secret vows, whatever they may be. As you rest your attention on your breath, take a moment and appreciate your own commitment to your path of awakening, whatever it looks like. As always, take your time coming out of meditation. Give yourself some deeper breaths with your eyes closed. Stretch a little if you like. And whenever you're ready, can slowly, slowly open your eyes. Take your time, there's no rush. Thanks for meditating with me today and contemplating your secret vows. 
You're doing great work.